Hi guys, welcome to another video from Overbite Gaming, and today I'm a little bit congested. I don't know why, it just suddenly happened when I started talking. The lovely, perfect timing. Sorry about that. Um, today I want to talk about the SSI Gold Box games. Now, I think I've done a video on the channel before, a little let's play of Death Knights of Kryn. So SSI basically had the D&D license along with some other ones and created a load of games. Uh, some were in using a specific engine uh, and these were classified as the gold box games. There were other ones uh, such as Eye of the Beholder, um, Heroes of the Lance. Yes, we were all aware of how terrible that was. But the gold box games were basically just like playing AD&D 2nd edition, which was the version at the time, I believe it was 2nd edition anyway, um, on your computer. And yes, AD&D 2nd edition does have its problems, mainly being that it is really difficult with beginning characters. Um, for instance, you know, your, your hit points were random and you got different dice for different classes. And if you were a mage, you got to roll 1d4. That's right, you started off the game with one to four hit points. The same amount of damage a knife could do. So you weren't exactly uh, wading into combat if possible, but you also received very few spells. I think I think first level mages got like two spells they could take. And, you know, once they're gone, they need to rest and relearn them. And it's horribly hard. So I think it was maybe fortunate that the first gold box game I got wasn't the first one. <laughs> Um, so the way I got into D&D &D overall was basically through SSI, and that's Strategic Simulations Inc., uh, who published Heroes of the Lance. Now, I was, I had a Spectrum at the time and was a member of a, a computer club where you would basically get, it's one of those deals where you get a game every month, um, and if you didn't pick a game, it, it would just send you whichever one they felt you would, you might like. But you still had to pay for it. So I was a member of one of those, and one month I ordered Heroes of the Lance. I was like, okay, cool, dragons and shit, excellent. And I got it, and I played it, and I didn't like it very much, but it came with the entirety of Dragons of... Um, dragons of... Oh, God, Autumn Twilight. There we go, I had to remember it. Jesus Christ. It's one of my favourite books in the world, and I had to remember it. And I read that, and that was incredibly good. So that got me interested in Dragonlance. I'm like, what's Dragonlance? And then I'm like, oh, wait, it's part of Dungeons & Dragons. And I'd been... I'd seen Dungeons & Dragons. I never really paid attention to it. Uh, but then I went and got the d and um, I think it was like a red box thing that had... Um, yeah, it was the red box. Dungeons & Dragons red box. Uh, that had, like, the core rules in. And I played it a bit with a mate, and I'm uh, like, okay. And I kind of just, like, kept buying it, despite hardly ever playing it, which is still true today, unfortunately. I think I think the latest one I bought was 5th edition, and, and I didn't like that as much. I far preferred the earlier ones, because it's turned much more into a sort of, like, a tabletop board game now. And for me, the fun of D&D &D was always being able to you know, just describe a situation, have the players intuit to it and, you know, create that story together rather than having, like, definitive rooms and minis and all that expensive shit that you really didn't need. So, yeah, I got off it a bit. I mean, it's still cool and I like it. And, you know, so some of the politics that surround it nowadays are a bit ugh as well for me. But whatever. If you enjoy it, you enjoy it. I don't anymore, unfortunately. However, I did when the Goldbox games came out. So the first one I got was Death Knights of Kryn, which was actually the second in the Kryn series that they were doing. Uh, the first being Champions of Kryn and the third being Dark Queen of Kryn. And um, that was amazing because obviously I'd like Dragonlance, having read the book. And I'd, pre I'd gone on to buy more books as well. I, well, I didn't just stop there. I did keep reading. <laughs> and it was really good. I remember actually finishing that one it will it's not easy it is ad and d you can get cut down or put to sleep you know there'd be like sections where you'd like start an encounter and like your entire party almost would be put to sleep and just killed instantly and you'd be like oh, f f Ugh. and then 
in the later days, um, I mean, I did get a few more, and my friends got some as well, so we used to swap them. Um, so we could both, you know, we could play the different adventures. It was great fun, and I had it on the Amiga. Yeah, that's where I got them. And later on, I, I got GOG and realised there were a whole bunch there I didn't play, so I downloaded them, and whew, some of them are rough. Not because they're bad games, just that I'd gotten used to a certain level of uh, comfort, sort of. Like, for instance, yeah, I bought Champions of Korea, and I played it, and I'm like, oh, this is quite similar, I can, I can deal with this. And I'm like, well, when am I going to level up? It's been ages, when am I levelling? Because in Death Knights of Korea, what it did, when a character was really level, it turned, um, turned their name purple. You didn't do that in Champions of Korea. You just kind of had to manually check the number and then look at the game book and be like, oh, okay, yeah, I've leveled, I'll go to a training hall now. Or just turn up at a training hall and be like, go on. <laughs> so it, it's stuff like that. And I think the memorization of spells was different and the resting was different. So it was a lot more convenient. I think you could, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure like in the first one, you couldn't just do like, Yes, I have a button that makes you hit, use all your healing and rememorize your spells all at once, and I don't need to keep doing it or re-giving you spells and stuff like that. And remembers them. Certainly, some some of the early ones didn't do that. I'm not sure if it was Champions. I think Champions didn't have that. It was one of the earlier ones, but not the earliest. Uh, they mainly stuck to um, Forgotten Realms and Dragonlance. Uh, Forgotten Realms was like the main. Uh, D and D setting at the time, uh, Dragonlance was definitely an offshoot, but uh, that was the one I always preferred because it was it was my setting, you know, it was the one that got me into it. So I was always more enthused about the um, the Dragonlance ones, although I have read Forgotten Realm stuff and played the games as well. And yes, they're fine, they're, they're good, but Dragonlance is still in my heart. They even did uh, a few Ravenloft and Dark Sun games, uh, not in the gold box style, but uh, certainly they did produce them. Uh, Eye of the Beholder, they did that one as well. Well, I say did that, they published it. I suspect it was done by US Gold, I think. And I suspect because they're the TSR agreement, they had to publish the game. Otherwise, they would have to order it and obviously take out any trademark shit. And even did Buck Rogers. Now, I never played the DOS version of it, but I had Buck Rogers count down to Doomsday uh, on my Mega Drive when I was growing up. And that game is fucking amazing. I loved that game. Purely because you have ship battles, which is cool. You have like a couple of different weapons you can use, and then you can ram as well. And like when you beat a ship, you can be like, okay, I'm just gonna blow up. Or you can board it. So you board the ship, you have a bit of a battle, get up to the bridge and take control. And now you've got a ship you can sell for lots of money. <laughs> and you could just do that over and over. You're just wandering, just farm all these ships to have like insane amounts of money. It, I just never seen anything like that at the time. It was just so cool being able to like, okay, you didn't get to like use that ship instead of your ship. But, you know, it didn't have like more guns and you'd use it there. But the fact you're able to board it and like take it as your own and sell it, that was brilliant at the time. I was just blown away by that. So good. It's, it's again though. It's very difficult in the um, early going. I believe TSR did do a Buck Rogers uh, role play system. So I don't know if it's based on that or whether it's on some version of like the D and D one. I don't know. But yeah, early going, not easy. Again, they do not call you in <laughs> in like early eighty, uh, late eighties, early nineties RPG. Jesus Christ, they hate you. They hate your guts. They want you dead. <laughs> As some dungeon masters I've played with do. Or not. Or just drag it out a bit. Long. You know who I'm talking about, don't you? Not you, the person that knows. Never mind. So SSI and the Cobox Games. As I said, I had it on the Amiga, which actually was superior to the DOS version with Death Knight Supreme, because instead of being stuck in 16 colours, which I believe was CGA, if I'm correct... Um, it actually had 32 colours on the Amiga. I was always very impressed by the, the the graphical nature of the Amiga. It always had a very Amiga style to it that was just pleasing to look at. Uh, that's kind of why I went 
well, and my friends were getting it, but I was kind of leaning towards Amiga over Atari ST at the time because the graphics just looked a little bit nicer to me. I mean, they're very comparable machines, or at least the, the models I was looking at. I think it was like the 500 and the ST. Uh, but yeah, it just it just pulled me across with that. This is big bang rather unfocused all of a sudden. Oh well, <laughs> that's what you get from you. Get a little bit of a nice, nice bit of uh, retro gaming maybe, and a little touch of just rambling. Yes, like a good ramble around these parts. Ah, uh, so SSI, they were founded in '79. And unfortunately, they emerged in the Mindscape in '94, which was subsequently swallowed up by the uh, the big poison factory that is uh, Ubisoft. Despite the fact that I've liked a couple of their newer games, yes, yes, I know, like Division Two and Odyssey, uh, those two. I never really got them. The complaint about Odyssey, I I was always happy doing side quests and not being able to progress the main quest until you know I was level X. I was perfectly happy doing side quest. I never felt like it was going, you must spend money, and I finished that game twice. Yeah, whatever. Obviously the side quests were mileage may vary for some, I guess. <laughs> but I, I was just like constantly trying to get like Cassandra down with other ladies, so you know, there there was there was there was the um the carrot on a stick approach for me. <laughs> anyway guys, I think I've rambled on far too much. So yeah, gold box D and D games from SSI available on GOG for not very much money. I can't remember how much I paid. I think I have all of them available that that are on there available to buy. I also have the um, the Ravenloft ones as well. Uh, again, very difficult. <laughs> there, there's a real theme coming out. Do you see it? Uh, but yeah, you know, if you if you're interested in like the earlier stuff and you don't mind like it literally being a, a tile based sort of battlefield and like really quite primitive sprites and there's no like facial details you, you know if it's got a beard it'd just be like this pink block that's got hair and a beard on it <laughs> uh but yeah they were when they came out they were great i really loved playing them i mean they were all very very similar it was all the same engine so you knew you know creating your character was all very similar you know all the battle system as I said, there were quality of life improvements that came in towards the later ones, so there's that. If you, I would probably recommend. Oh, it's, it's tricky actually because I want to say I recommend just starting with like the first earlier ones. Like if you've got a series like the the, the Dragonlance ones, um, start with Chambers of Quinn is what I want to say. But it's clunkier because it doesn't have the quality of life shit. And it's harder because your characters aren't higher level. I mean, there's a big difference when you're having a fighter with like 50 hit points getting smacked by a longsword that does 1d8 is with a mage that's got 4 hit points. I'm just saying. And plus, like, resurrection, super expensive as well. You can resurrect your characters, but it's so expensive that, like, and the amount of time you need to do it, it just constantly skins you. I mean, I'm sure there's a way to min-max it, but it is randomised. It's based on the D &D, uh, advanced D&D 2nd edition rules, as far as I'm aware. And, uh, yeah, they can be random because it's based on dice. So, eh. But then, you know, you could you could maybe do what I do and, like, get the second one. So you've got the quality of life stuff. You've got slightly higher level characters that aren't quite as prone to falling to death quite as quickly. Although they still will because it's a bastard hard game. So yeah, maybe. But I think I think they do them in like packs and shit. I think I bought like three different packs and it had different games in, so if you're gonna buy one, you may as well play the first one, right? I guess. Anyway guys, that's been me going on for far too much. Far too much. Jesus Christ. Uh I love these games. I've still got my Amiga versions of uh, Death Knight's Queen, Dark Queen of Crane, uh, which I obviously rebought on GOG as well, just for simplicity's sake, and I don't have to run an Amiga emulator every time I want to bloody play them. Uh, but yeah, let me know down below if if you've played these games and what you thought of them at the time and now. Just uh, tell you what, just any D&D &D shit you want to talk about down below, I'm up for it. So you go ahead, you leave your comment, and I'll, 
I do respond in nearly every comment because it's not hard to do when you get maybe one every third video. <laughs> but yep, yeah, I, I respond to pretty much everybody. So with that in mind, tease you guys, I'll catch you next time.